disappointed in the first half. Um, we did not, we, we weren't us in the first half. Um, we took some tough shots in crowds, the ball froze, and that leaked into our defense, um, which wasn't as good as, as, as we've been this year. Um, at the end of the day, you look back through the year, there's, I'm disappointed in some things that I did in terms of substitutions, calls, disappointed in some different play coming out in first halves. But the one thing I've never been disappointed in this group is an absolute resilience that they have. And that comes from their appreciation for the opportunity to have an athletic <laughs> scholarship at IPFW and to play basketball. That comes from the equity they build with each other through acts of caring every day from the 12 months a year we spend with each other. That comes from their commitment to team. And when I reflect on this year's team with an inside out perspective, which is what, how I, how I look at things, how I look at college athletics. When I look at it that way, like I, I, I could care less about what you guys write about what external people say about our group, because what, what college athletics is about is inside that locker room, those bonds, those relationships, how they learn to operate under adversity. And our inside out perspective, as I look at what we do inside, that's what's right in college basketball right now. That group in that locker room is so committed to each other so committed to if I say do this, they're going to give it everything they got. And I'm very, very pleased with this year, although disappointed with the outcome. And, and yeah, I like to win games. And we've won a lot of games. But we've won games over the years because of that inside-out perspective and our, our commitment to our process. Uh, I mean, you, you got to help me out with time and score. I mean, there was a bunch of different situations. I mean, as we got it down, I mean, in general, you're looking for that one play. To... I mean, you got to get a stop. You got to, I mean, got to get a stop, and then you got to score. I mean, I wish I could give you more on that. I don't know if you give me a certain play, I can reference a certain play. But you know, they were they were they were leading. We got to score more points than them. Yeah, it was. A, I mean, are you talking about the last one where we had to foul afterwards? Uh, you know, I mean, it, it, we executed what we were trying to. I mean, he drew a big crowd. I, I, we didn't need a three at that stage. We're down four in that play. I thought you were referring to the drive before. I mean, he's get, he got in the paint. I mean, here's a guy that was top three in the nation in in free throws. I mean, he only shot seven tonight. I mean, that's that's a low for him. Um, you know, I thought he played over the top a little too much. Uh, but I thought he got some great angles and, uh, and, and played with some contact. And, you know, he's one of the hardest guys in college basketball to referee. Because, I mean, honestly, I, you look at it, I think he's probably and I haven't seen every team play, but he's arguably, with statistically what he's done from the free throw line, if not the best driver in the country, one of the top two or three drivers in the country, um, at how, and, and he gets to the free throw line that way. Um, now, he's a hard guy to referee because he initiates a lot of contact. Um, as you probably saw in my reaction, I probably thought he deserved a few more, but I, I, I've never been satisfied with uh, how many free throws we've gotten. Let's take one here. Third row. Then we'll come back to Matt. Coach, how hard is it to beat a team three times in a single season? Well, it's gotten us two years in a row. Um, but then the year before that, uh, we, we, we got We took care of it. Um, you know, I think – I don't even look at it as three times in a year, but you, you look at – I got so much respect for North Dakota State. Um, Dave does a great job. Before him, Saul did a great job. Before that, Coach Miles – I mean, there's just great tradition there. Uh, and, and winning tradition. They do it the right way. They keep the game simple, and they just teach them how to play the game. And they play with unbelievable toughness. Um, you know, our mantra is, on the top of our board every time we play North Dakota State is that, you know, the only way to beat North Dakota State is you got to out tough them. And we did that twice this year. And I do think there's a great challenge to take a, a, a program as well coached as that with, with, uh, with, with that sort of tradition and out tough them. Um, three times in a row, I think it's very, very challenging. At the end of the day, though, I mean, like, like John said, I mean, 
I'm disappointed. I'm frustrated. We, we just we weren't us in the first half. We've had maybe three to four halves all year long like that. And, you know, I'll, I'll give credit to, to North Dakota State. They did a good job. I mean, they came out ready to play and they scored. They made buckets on the on the uh, and scored the ball. But on our offensive end, I mean, we just we settled for tough shots and our process wasn't very good. We didn't swing it. Ball froze. I didn't play with great pace, but some of that was and then that leaked into our defense. So that was all self-imposed with how we do. And so, you know, at the end of the day, it is. It's it's tough to beat anybody three times, but it's tough to beat North Dakota State once. I mean, they're really good. I got a lot of respect for them. I think we have another one in the third row here. John, uh, you're down 18 and a half, and then didn't start great in the second half either. They pushed the lead to, I think, 23. Did you kind of run out of time at that point? How did you find a way to, to finally kind of get it turned over and start to make a run? I mean, the last four or five, six years, we've been one of the best offensive teams in the country. We can score the ball in bunches. I mean, our guys have seen it. And it's not just this crew. I mean, it's we've graduated guy after guy after guy through the years, and just the next guys come in, and when they when they operate within our process, we can score it in bunches, and we've done it. And so the guys know that, and and uh, you know they just they just keep build up. Now this was one of, I mean, honestly, in my last four years, this group showed the best defense that we've had in my four years. Um, now, it, it, how we play, it becomes difficult to have great defensive numbers because our tempo is so fast when you're top you know, 20 in the country and tempo, it creates so many possessions. And, you know, we've got a couple good players like John that I, you know, I don't, I don't sub him very well, so he gets worn out. But we've had an ability to, to lock in and really get some stops when we've wanted to this year. Um, and, and, and I can reference, you know, I'm probably a dozen games where we've done that. It's not every night, um, but, but we have that ability. And I thought, I thought we made some things tougher in the, in the second half. Uh, but down the stretch, I mean, Paul, Paul just made some tough, tough shots. And, you know, we've, we've made him inefficient the last two times. And I told our guys, I mean, we made, you know, we made Paul inefficient. We made Cameron Hunter inefficient. And Cameron's only a freshman. You know, he'll evolve. He's going to be a really good player. But, uh, but I, I mean, I told, I told our guys all week long, I said, hey, it's a huge challenge, like, to keep Paul Miller down three times in a row, make him inefficient. Like, he's going to score because he's going to shoot it. All right? Uh, you know, so to do that is really challenging. That's probably the most challenging part of the night. And, and he came through down the stretch when the pressure was on.